he took his master degree in internet computing from university of wales united kingdom and uh, he is also holding a phd degree in wireless sensors and networks and uh, he is currently uh, working as hod head of the department of it in rajagiri school of engineering and uh, and technology ernakulam so welcome to the platform sir so before uh, moving to the session i would like to give you uh, a set of instruction this is only for students students uh, please pay attention nammada session oru manikur aanu ullathu adile first 20 minutes sir class edukkumba irikkum so adu kenittulla next 10 minutes namukku oru question answer session undu so students can ask questions doubts and clear the doubts during this session so there is a option uh, q and a option in their uh, chat box so they can ask question through that window so we will discuss the question during the uh, q and a session also then 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 the next 20 minutes he will take the classes and he will give you the class lectures and uh, next 10 minutes he you can again uh, discuss some sort of questions or doubts regarding the topic so uh, i would like to hand over the session to our faculty uh, once again welcome to the platform sir so you can continue the session thank you hi good morning all Uh, thank you for the introduction uh, a correction is there uh, i am an associate associate professor in it department not an hod okay so that's a correction in the introduction now uh, let's discuss sorry for the sorry for the incorrect information sir sorry okay sorry. now going into the topic last class we discussed about the fundamentals of memory and the organization of the memory ram and rom was covered in that now today today's class i am trying to concentrate on giving you an idea of cache memory going to the topic this is a diagram which i have already explained in the last class this shows the hierarchy of the memory from this diagram itself it shows that cpu register is on the top then the cache memory main memory secondary and tertiary memory the cache memory lies on the top because of many reasons that is very speedy very costly when compared with the below ones it can transfer data very fast and compare the size of the memory when compared with the main memory cache memory the The amount of memory in a system will be less since it is costly but we require cache memory in the system to improve the performance of the system we will go into the detail and tell the reason the processor works very fast when you say the configuration of your pc or your mobile you may, you will the speed of your processor when you switch on your computer for the first time hello sir hello sir uh, slide slides move in illa uh, could you please change the slides in my screen i can see the changing slides uh, i think it's one minute the slide is check one minute hello yeah yeah sir i can hear you yeah that's ah. fine okay now it's okay so we were discussing about uh, the speed of the processor the processor works with very high speed the data access from the memory when compared with the speed of the processor it will not match for any performance or any execution it needs the data from the memory getting the data for the processor from the hard disk it's very very slow then primary memory ram was introduced in between that so the processor primary memory ram that's the ram and the hard disk is it. but the still the ram the speed of the ram it's not matching with the processor still it is very less so we the architecture introduced cache memory between primary memory ram and the processor 
So whatever the processor needs, it takes from the cache memory. Cache memory operates almost at par with the speed of the processor. So the cache memory is placed between the processor and the main memory. This is an efficient utilization to utilize the time of the processor. Going to the next slide. In this diagram, it shows where the cache memory is located. And after the main memory, it's the secondary memory that is a hard disk and all. So the, when the processor requests a data from the main memory, that data is supposed to be there in the cache memory. It can be there or it won't be there. We will see in detail in the coming. If it is there in the cache memory, the processor access the data in a very high speed. If it is not there, let's see what is going to happen in the coming slide. Before going into the detail, let's study two technical terms, locality of reference, two things, temporal locality of reference and spatial locality of reference. I'll try to explain in this way. Take the case of a loop. When a loop is running, the same data, same instructions are executed continuously for many times. Take another example. When you're running a program, one instruction is loaded and there is high chance of accessing the subsequent instruction very in the very next step. So I have mentioned two things. Let's come to the technical term. Temporal locality of reference. It means that recently executed instructions are likely to be executed again and again soon. So when we take some instructions from the main memory and that is there in the cache memory, there is high chance of accessing that content which is in the cache memory immediately again and again and again. Now, spatial locality of reference has another aspect. When the processor is executing an instruction, there is high chance of executing an instruction very close to that located in the primary, primary memory. These are the two aspects. So it's explained in this way, temporal aspect. Whenever an information item is first needed, it is brought to the cache memory. It will stay in the cache memory or it will remain in the cache memory until it is needed again. Until it is needed again, it will be there in the cache memory. There are some situations where it has to be removed from the cache memory. We will study that. The second aspect, spatial aspect. So when the processor require an instruction or some data which is located in the primary memory, that is moved to the cache memory, but it is better to move few more information or few more instruction, which is adjacent, which is located in the adjacent location in the primary memory. Because there is high chance of executing that instruction. Hope it's clear. So, <clears throat> Just summarizing very fast. Temporal means if one instruction is there in the primary memory and that is brought to the cache memory, that instruction or information or data will be there in the cache memory until it is used again. That is temporal. Spatial means when the processor needs some instruction or data, which is fetched from the primary memory and which is loaded in the cache memory for immediate access by the processor. Along with that particular information or instruction, few more adjacent locations from the primary memory is loaded to the cache memory. Hope it's clear. Now, cache memory is also a memory where Data are stored which is required for the processor. Whatever the processor is needed that is located, that is loaded to the cache. There are two types of activities involved in cache. 
if the processor is searching for a data which is in the primary memory if that is in the cache memory already that is called a hit and the data can be accessed immediately now what happens if it is not there it is called a miss it have to be fetched from the main memory and it have to be loaded to the cache memory so hit and miss it means whatever searching whatever searching by the processor if it is there in the cache that is called a hit whatever searching if it is not there in the cache that is called a miss okay what are the different possibilities with this hit and miss with read and write operation let's start with the read operation if the processor is executing a read operation and if the content is there in the cache memory that is called a cache hit and that can be read by the processor now if it is not there that is called a cache miss if it is a cache miss the content required by the processor will be loaded from the primary memory main memory to the cache memory to the cache memory and the processor access that from the cache memory. there is one more chance one more chance if the processor required for some data that is not there in the cache memory it is there in the primary memory the content in the primary memory have to be loaded to the cache but it doesn't have a space to load when we compare the primary and the cache memory cache memory it's very less when compared with the primary so the processor requires some data some instruction which is not there in the cache it is there in the primary memory it have to be loaded to the cache memory and cache memory doesn't have space in this situation some content from the cache have to be removed to load this insert to load this information that is cache miss but a block have to be removed or replaced replacement algorithm how it is done we will see in this class itself so read operation is there we have discussed cache hit is there cache miss two situation there is space it will be loaded to the cache processor access access that information from cache there is no space in the cache something have to be removed then it will be loaded the processor accept access that then what is happening with write operation write operation the during <coughs> during the execution some information are loaded from cache memory processor accept it access it and during the execution there will be some modification which have to be updated to the primary memory which have to be updated to the primary memory that particular block of information was accessed from cache memory by the processor and something updation is required what will happen there are different methods in write operation also when the processor updates some information and it when it is required to write it checks the cache memory if that particular corresponding block is there in the cache that is called a write hit if it is not there in the cache it is removed already it is called a write miss i'll repeat once again processor executes a block and information some modification is done by the processor it have to be written back it have to be updated when it is trying to update processor finds that that particular block is there in the cache that is right here if it is not there that is right miss now if it is a right hit <coughs> how the processor will operate how it is operate it can be operated in two different ways two different let me make it simple 
when we take some information from the primary memory to the cache memory if there is any update by the processor it have to be updated in the primary memory it have to be updated in the primary memory for sure now what is happening here in write through and write back which are two different methods in write head in write through in write through the update is done in the cache plus at the same time the update is done in the main memory also i repeat when there is a modification and that particular content resides in the cache memory that update is done in the cache memory along with that the same update is also done in the main memory also that is write through what is write back then okay when there is a modification the processor updates the block in the cache memory at that time the processor will not update primary memory in write back method it just update the block in the cache memory so the cache memory is updated main memory is not updated it have to be updated in write back when is the main memory getting updated so we mentioned earlier this blocks resides in the cache memory for some more time when another blocks come to that location it have to be removed it have to be removed in write back at the time of removing that particular block from cache memory which is updated by the processor then that particular thing have to be updated in the primary memory also in the main memory then how it knows that that is updated this is implemented using a bit called dirty bit in write back when the processor updates a block using write back method the dirty bit is set so when it is removed from the cache memory it can be easily identified yes dirty bit is set that means that there was an update in the primary that block in cache memory it have to be updated to the main memory so that updation will be done if the dirty bit is not set it means that there was no updation no need to update the main memory i hope it's clear then in the case of write miss when the processor updates some portion it have to be written back or it have to be updated but it when it checks that particular block is not there in the cache memory what to do there are two methods one is write around and second is write allocation in write around the processor directly update the main memory correct in the second method write allocation the processor it modified some portion it have to be updated to the main memory so it checks in the cache memory it is not there in the cache memory in write allocation method that particular block will be loaded from the main memory to the cache memory and the cache memory will be updated and it will be there in the cache memory the main memory will be updated when that particular blocks is getting removed from the cache memory okay so let's move on to the next slide before that summarizing this cache hit is there cache miss is there for read operation write hit is there and write miss is <coughs> sorry write miss is there for write operation in write operation write through is there write back is there for write hit for write miss write around and write allocation is there hope it's clear uh excuse me sir yes uh, uh sir uh, actually uh, so far we don't have any questions so i just want mention something to students 
uh, hello everyone you can post your questions and queries in uh, Q&A session there will be a Q&A session available on your screen so you can drop your questions or doubts in there so we can discuss uh, during the Q&A session okay I think hope you all are clear about that okay, sir. Uh, okay sir, we have a we have a question okay okay I, I can read out that uh, do the instruction control information also will be stored in cache memory for fast execution can you please repeat uh, do, do the instruction control information also will be stored in cache memory for okay. first fast execution uh, whatever the processor requires Whatever the processor requires, it can be an instruction, it can be some data, whatever the processor requires, that will be loaded to the cache memory, irrespective of anything. Okay, uh, sir, we have another question. How is dirty bit set? Okay. In cache memory, we have seen when it the main memory is getting updated sometimes when there is an updation the cache memory along with that the main memory is also updated at the same time in some other cases in other other method when the cache memory is updated the main memory is not updated at that time for time saving when this updated one is getting removed from the cache memory it have to be updated to the primary memory, to the main memory. For that, there is a bit assigned, it is called dirty bit. When there is any updation in the cache, in a block, cache block, the dirty bit is set. And when that particular block is getting removed from the cache memory, it checks whether the dirty bit is set or not. If the dirty bit is set, it means that, that particular block was updated. It means that it has to be updated in the main memory also. If it is not updated, and if that block is further used in after some other time, that data won't be updated one. Hope it's clear. Okay, sir, we have another question. Any significance for the name dirty in the term of dirty bit? In the term dirty bit, it's called dirty bit. Okay, we can say some modification is there done. Actually, some content was there in a block. That particular block was modified or changed. Some we cannot say some it have done something. There some correction have made, some modification have made. So it is called as a dirty bit. Okay, sir. Another question. Uh, sir, please explain right allocation once more. Okay. I'll, I'll make it fast. Right operation. So, whatever the processor needs, it's taken from the cache. If it is not there in the cache, it is loaded to the cache memory. And the processor accept that from the cache memory. When the processor do some operation, the content accepted from the cache memory, sometimes some modification have will occur. When these modification occur, it have to be updated in the cache. Plus, it have to be updated in the main memory. First thing, it have to be updated in the cache because there is a high chance of accessing it again and again and again. We have seen temporal and spatial. It have to be updated in the cache. When the cache is filled, some portion have to be taken out and new one have to be loaded by the requirement from the processor. So, when the cache memory is updated, the main memory also have to be updated. In the write operation, there are different methods in write hit. That means that when the processor is updating the content, 
and that particular content is there in the cache memory that is called write hit in write hit two methods write through and write back in write through when there is an updation that is done in the cache memory along with that the main memory is updated then and there itself it require more time next thing write back the content is updated in the cache memory it is there in the cache memory it is not removed so we don't need to update the main memory since it is there in the cache memory itself but the content is updated then a dirty bit is set at any point of time if this particular block is removed it checks the dirty bit it means that the content is modified if the dirty bit is set it means the content is modified then the primary memory is updated using that block hope it's clear okay sir uh, sir another question is that what is the difference between memory access time and memory cycle time okay that we have seen in the last class but i'll explain in a brief way memory access time is time taken the processor has given an instruction to read something from the memory you start your stopwatch when the processor gives an instruction when that instruction is complete you stop the time taken for that is the first one the cycle one the second one is the time delay between two independent instructions done subsequently that is a definition that is explanation uh okay sir we don't have any questions so we can continue the session let's go to the next slide as i mentioned the size of the cache memory is very less when compared with the main memory so whatever is required by the processor have to be loaded to the cache memory since the cache memory the size is very less we need to take out something replace something then load something again and again according to the request by the processor it needs a mapping function since the cache memory is slow we are going to discuss three different types of mapping fu functions first one is direct mapping second associative mapping third one set associative mapping the second one associative mapping is also sometimes called fully associative mapping to explain this i think that it's better to take an example here in this example my address bus is of 16 bit you have a pen and paper you write 16 bit how many locations it can address using 16 bit you write it on that and my cache memory size is 2048 words main memory is 4096 don't worry we will have a diagram for it then it will be more clear for you so without wasting time let's go to the next we will explain with the diagram and we will come back listen to this diagram you can see the heading cache on the left hand side and the main memory in the right hand side looking into this diagram itself you can see the size of the main memory and you can see the size of the cache memory the main memory the whole thing is divided into blocks it is called pages and the cache memory is also divided into blocks the main thing you have to keep in mind the block size of the main memory and the block size of the cache memory is same then what is the size of the block in my example in block 0 there are 16 locations block 0 16 location block 1 16 location block 120 16, 16 locations cache memory is also the block size is same So in block zero, I can store sixteen words. 
in the cache memory. Then what do you mean by direct mapping? Coming back to this. Block J of the main memory maps into block J modulo 128 in the cache memory. Okay. It will be a confusion for you. Coming back to this diagram. How many blocks are there in cache memory? 128. That is 0 to 127. How many blocks are there in main memory? That is 4096. That is block 0 to block 4095. That many blocks are there. Processor may require any block from the main memory at any point of time. And that block has to be loaded to the cache memory. How the mapping is done in direct mapping? Direct mapping is a simplest mapping method. It is very simple. Block 0 goes to block 0 of the cache. Block 1 goes to block 1 in the cache from the main memory. Block 127 in the main memory goes to block 127 in the cache memory. Okay, then where does the block 128 have to go? Block 128 goes to block 0. You can see the color similarity in this diagram. So block 256 also goes to block 0 in the cache. Block 4095 goes to block 127 in the cache from the main memory. Hope it's clear. Now, if you go back to this slide, the first, it is a simple technique, second sentence, block J of the main memory maps into block J modulo 128 of the cache memory. Hope it's crystal clear for you. Block 0 goes to block 0. Block 127 from main goes to block 127 of the cache. Finished cache. But block 128 goes to block 0. Hope it's clear. Okay. Now, how it is done? How the mapping is done? I'll try to explain. 4 bits, that is the least significant 4 bits of the 16 bit is used for finding the word, finding the location in each block. You can see a main memory address diagram below with three columns. Here are the four bits, the last least significant bit, that four bits is used to identify the location of each block. Why the 4 bits? 2 raised to 4 that is 16. In a block there are 16 locations. So 4 bits is required to address that 4 16 location in each block. Right? Then the next 7 bits it's used to find out which block it is. 2 raised to 7 is 128. So that 7 bits is required or is enough to find out which block is. 2 raised to 7 is 128. Then 5 bits for tag. What do you mean by tag? Tag means in the cache memory, you can see some heading tag. I will try to explain the tag with this diagram. With this diagram. So I am just addressing, addressing 0 to 127, 0 to 127, the first thing in the main memory with this 0 to 127, then 128 to 255, then 255 to the next. Then in the last 4095, how many blocks are there in this? It is 0 to 31. 0 to 31. If I divide my main memory, my main memory, that is 
up to 0 to 127, then 128 to the next 255. If it goes like that, I can have 32, that is 0 to 31, 32 different blocks. So to address which among these 32, I need this 5 bits. And that is called tag bits. Hope it's clear. Let me make it very fast once again. The last, sorry, the least significant four bits is used to identify which word in each block. Then the seven bits, two raised to seven, that is 128, is used to identify which block it is. Then the five bits, it's a tag to identify which among these 32 is there. So this kind of mapping is done in direct mapping. This is very simple. Mapping is very simple, but it has a lot of disadvantages, also advantage. It's very simple, that is advantage. What is the disadvantage of this? If block zero from the main memory, that page is loaded to the frame block zero here in the cache. That block zero can only be loaded to the block zero in the cache from the main memory. Even if the entire frame of the cache block one, block two, up to 127 is empty. And block zero is already there from the main memory in the block zero of the cache memory. That is filled by block zero from main memory. And the entire thing is empty. Now, block 128 is asked, the content from the block 128 is required by the processor. That block 128 can be fitted only in block 0 of the cache, which is already occupied. But the entire rest of the thing is vacant. But it cannot be fitted to any else. The block 0, which is loaded by block 0 of main memory, has to be removed. This is one of the main disadvantages. That's why it is called direct mapping. Every block of the main memory is directly mapped to a particular location in the cache. Hope it's clear. What do you mean by direct mapping? Why it is called direct mapping? And how the main memory address is used to find out the location in the cache memory. And the advantages and disadvantages also. This diagram, this explanation we have already seen. This diagram, okay. Next is associative mapping. Fully associative mapping. The main disadvantage of direct mapping we have already seen. To overcome that disadvantage, we can use associative mapping. In associative mapping, the main disadvantage of the direct mapping it's overcome it means that any block of the main memory can be loaded to any block in the cache memory whichever is free it can be loaded with that now look at this diagram the same diagram here the block in from in my example block zero have 16 locations in main memory and in cache memory also in main memory, block 0 have 16 location. In cache memory also, block 0 have 16 location. Why that 16 in block 0? Again, hope you remember we have discussed the spatial reference and temporal reference. There is a high chance of asking for the next subsequent information which is already executed, which is currently executed by the processor. So it's better to keep 16 or more, it's up to you or up to the organization. Block have not one more than that. The entire block is transferred from the main memory to the cache memory. It will only increase the performance. Okay, coming back. Here the block zero of the main memory can be loaded to any block, whichever is free in the cache memory. There are advantages and disadvantages. The main advantage is 
if there is any free location in the cache memory that can be loaded then what is the disadvantage to get some data or to check the required data by the processor is there in the cache memory the processor has to check the entire cache blocks to find out whether it is there or not that is one of the disadvantage main advantage also we have mentioned now look into the main memory address as i mentioned in each block there are 16 locations we require four bits to identify each location so four least significant bits are reserved for that or it is used for that to identify which location in a block next 12 bits from this 16 that is 2 raised to 12 that is 4096 2 raised to 12 4096 yes i am right 20 4096 two raised to 12 you can see the blocks in the main memory also 4096 blocks so this tag is used to identify that so the main memory address four bits are reserved for finding a word in the block next 12 bits it's tag and it is reserved for that now we have explained associative mapping the advantages and disadvantages the main disadvantages if the processor needs some data the processor have to check the entire blocks to find it out whether it is there or not the advantage is if there is any location vacant in cache memory and if the processor has something which is not there in the cache that will be loaded from the main memory to the cache memory in the block whichever it's free right now next go to set associative mapping the main disadvantage of associative mapping is we have this it have to check all the way in set associative mapping i'll explain with this diagram we need only few tags look at this diagram here the cache memory again it have 128 blocks each blocks in my example 16 locations and in the main memory in my example 4096 location blocks and in each block it have 16 words 16 words so the total number of words that can be stored in this example is 4096 into 16 that is the total words that can be stored in main memory now coming to this set associative mapping here in the cache memory block 0 and block 1 it's combined and called as set 0 block 2 and block 3 it's set 1 this is called two way set associative we can make a set with four that it will be called four way set associative i will explain once again two blocks in this cache memory it's combined to form a set in my example It can be four. That will be four-way set associative. Here it is two-way set associative. What is advantage? Let's see with this example itself. So look into this cache. Block zero, block one. That is set zero. Block two, block three. That is set one. Block four, block five. That will be set two. And in the last block one twenty-six and block one twenty-seven. That is set sixty-three. so totally 64 sets will be there totally 64 set will be there if the number 64 in your mind now the blocks from main memory there is some rule block 0 will go to set 0 i repeat block 0 from the main memory can go to any location in set 0 that means that block 0 from main memory can fit into 
ब्लॉक जीरो और ब्लॉक वन नो एर सी दिस इज अ कॉम्बिनेशन ऑफ वॉट वी हैव स्टडीड द लास्ट टू द लास्ट टू वन डायरेक्ट मैपिंग प्लस असोसिएटिव मैपिंग दिस इज अ कॉम्बिनेशन ऑफ दीज टू वाई आई एम सेंग दिस इज अ कॉम्बिनेशन ऑफ दैट टू एस block 0 can from sorry the block 0 from the main memory can fit into any location of set 0 hope it's clear then block 63 will go to the last set then where does this block 64 go block 64 will go to block set 0 sorry block 64 in the main memory will go to set 0 and the block 64 in the main memory can fit into block 0 or block 1 of the cache i can easily say and here you can find you can you can implement the modulo function okay that is block modulo 64 it's clearly it will be easy to find it out which set it will go so i'll repeat once again block 0 will go to block 0 or block 1 which is set 0 right hope it's clear now again the four four bits in the main memory address it is used to identify the location in each block because in each block there are 16 locations 2 raised to 4 that is enough and here the most significant 6 bits they are used to identify the tag 2 raised to 6 is 64 that means that 64 tags are there the six bits are used the most significant bit it's used to determine the tag and in the middle six bits it is used to identify the set you do one thing you write block 0 up to block 63 in a line like this diagram like this diagram sorry like this diagram block 0 to block 63 then block 64 to other line and it goes up to 4096 4095 if you write according to that that you can address that whole set using the six bits i repeat once again the least significant bit 4 it's used to identify which location from each block then the next six bit it's used to identify which set it is the m must be its six bit it is used to identify the tag location okay now we have to discuss about replacement algorithm before that we have discussed three mapping techniques that is direct mapping associative mapping set associative mapping then since the cache memory is very less in size and processor require data and the cache memory is full it have to be replaced in the case of direct mapping we don't require any replacement algorithm what do you mean by replacement algorithm so if the cache memory is full which block you will remove we have to implement an algorithm which in such a way that the efficiency will be maximum we have some algorithm to remove a block we will discuss that but take the case of the first mapping technique that is direct mapping technique in direct mapping technique we don't require any replacement algorithm what is the reason in direct mapping 
a block from the main memory it can be fit only to a particular block in the cache memory if that particular cache memory is filled it have to be removed so we don't need any particular algorithm for that it have to be removed take the case of other set associative or fully associative associative if the cache memory is filled and the processor needs some data we can remove in associative we can remove any block which block have to be removed here comes there are different algorithm for that first thing is we will discuss least recently used algorithm it keeps a track which block is referred for the last which is not at all referred for the last time last few time or which is least recently used okay that particular block which is least recently used can be removed and the new block have can be loaded that algorithm oh, is hello. called least recently used and there is another hello, algorithm sir. first come first out also yes hello please. sir can you hear me yes, sir uh, we have only 10 minutes left so okay just one just to remind you okay i'll just do one reminder we have only 10 minutes, minutes left it fast. okay Okay. If there is any doubt, we can ask at the end. Let me finish it off. This. Okay. Okay. So yeah, that's fine, sir. Least recently used algorithm. It's clear for you. Another algorithm is FIFO. First in, first out. Which block is loaded first? It can be removed. So these two algorithm or random removal. These are few algorithms. Now, some performance consideration. If the processor is asking for a block or data which is there in the cache it's very good so it's better to find out a performance ratio for that a common measure of success is called the price of performance ratio the performance depends upon how fast the machine instructions are brought to the processor and how fast it is executed it will be very fast if the required data is in the cache and we can measure the performance now hit rate and miss penalty you know what is a hit what is a miss the extra time taken to bring the desired information to the cache that is a miss penalty okay hit rate if it is everything asked by the processor is there in the cache it's very good but normally it won't happen so we can calculate the hit rate also the processor has has this many and it this many was there so we can calculate the hit rate also it is 0.990% that is excellent so regarding the cache we have studied what is cache memory what are the functions of cache memory what is advantage of cache memory what are the replacement algorithm what even be hit and miss so i hope the cache memory it's almost clear for you now i'll wait for your doubts okay thank you sir so i can quickly go through the questions and the first one is uh, can you uh, can, can you explain use of tag in direct mapping okay in direct mapping see the case of the main memory how many blocks are there 4096 blocks are there in each block how many locations are there 16 locations are there so when the processor asks for a particular data which is located in a block in the main memory that that is not there in the cache it have to be moved from the main memory and it have to be fitted into the cache memory so which block it has to fit in direct mapping hello yes sir hello yes hello okay uh, yeah am i audible uh, can i move to another question 
Yes, sir. I, I didn't. I didn't complete it. So the four bits in the okay. word, four bits in the word that is least significant bits is used to identify the location in each block, and the seven bits it is to identify the blocks. Two raised to seven is one twenty eight. That is one twenty eight is a maximum blocks in the main cache. Sorry, in the cache memory. So it is used to identify the blocks. And five bit tags two raised to five is thirty two. Okay, come on. Next question, please. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. The next question is: Is direct mapping associated with the hashing function mapping? Ah, uh, it's not clear. I was. It was not audible. Okay. Uh, I can repeat once again. Is direct mapping associated with hashing function mapping? Is direct? Yes, please. Yes. Okay, sir. Uh, then another question: Why can't we make the cache memory as large as main memory? Now I uh, think you have to go back to the memory hierarchy. Memory hierarchy in the sense, cache memory to implement that much is very costly. So. it is not possible to build cache memory or incorporate that much which is equivalent enough or the same size of the primary memory so we cannot make the primary memory of the same size of a hard disk all your programs are stored in the secondary memory that is a hard disk when you are executing your c program take that example which is stored in your hard disk to execute that program listen to this statement every program that have to be executed or every program that is being executed have to be stored to the primary memory before execution okay the size of the primary memory is very less when compared to the secondary memory because the primary memory is much costly than the secondary memory but the speed of the primary memory when comparing with the speed of the processor it's very less the primary memory cannot it's not possible to supply data according to the speed of the processor so we implemented cache memory cache memory the speed is very high but the cost is very high so the size of the cache memory is zero sorry the size of the cache memory is very less when compared with the primary memory next thing if you are more interested just go and read level 1 cache level 2 cache and level 3 cache there are different levels in level 1 cache which is very close to the processor level 1 cache is very high speed than compared to the level 2 or level 3 Hope I have answered. Okay, sir. We have another question. Which mapping is used by Windows and Linux? Is there any mapping that is not used at all? It it is independent of the operating systems. Okay. Uh, we have another question. Please explain associated mapping once again. Okay, I can explain this diagram. Just to make it clear, I am taking an example. This is the example. My main memory, or in this example, the there are four zero nine six blocks. Four zero nine six blocks. Each block have sixteen locations, sixteen words in each block. any block from this main memory have to be loaded to the cache memory to which location it have it have to be loaded we need to identify for that tag is required so main memory address the more significant 12 bits are used for tag tagging so 2 raised to 12 that is 4096 which is the block size of the main memory it's used as a tag and next four bits which is each <coughs> the least significant four bits 
that is used to identify which location in each block in associative mapping any block in the main memory or from the main memory can be loaded to any of these blocks in the cache memory so it has to be tracked for tracking we need we require 12 tags 12 tag bits that is enough only difficulty is to find it out whether the data is there in the cache memory the processor have to check the entire location in the first direct mapping the required data can be located only to a specific location nowhere else in this thing any location can be used to locate any block from the main memory i'll be able to provide you notes for this hello okay uh, hello sir actually uh, we have couple of questions more but we are actually running out of time i think we have answered almost the questions so uh, if you can forward me one... the questions in the document i'll be able to provide you the answers for that yes sir of course sir we can do that and uh, sorry for the uh, participants we cannot answer some of the question but we have done almost uh, questions and uh, thank you for thank you for the session sir it was very interesting session and uh, hope everything was clear and uh, thank you for the session and sharing the knowledge with us as well as the students thank you for everyone for attending the session thank you thank you take care